So, you've been accepted into medical school, congratulations, and you've spent the last four, five, maybe even six plus years trying to do good in school, doing research, trying to ace your MCAT, but once you've been accepted, you likely have like a few months before you actually start school. So what do you actually do with all of this free time? Now, I genuinely had a lot of trouble with this because I'm a bit of an overthinker. So I obviously wanted to be as prepared as possible for my first semester, but I did reason that like preemptively studying probably wouldn't be the best use of my time just because I didn't know what the course curriculum would be like. I didn't know uh, what the load would look like and what the test would kind of be focused on. So I figured studying ahead of time probably wouldn't be very effective, but I still want to do something. And so here are five different things that I genuinely think have prepared me well for this first semester of medical school and will be helpful in the long run as well. So for number one, it's to become financially literate, or at least even a little financially literate because medical school is extremely expensive. Uh, most people aren't gonna be able to pay for it outright. And so you will eventually need to take out loans to actually pay for the tuition and the schooling in general. And since it's not really recommended to work while in medical school, you're kind of signing up for a minimum of like four years where you have a massive amount of expenses like tuition, rent, utilities, food, going out money, and essentially little to no income, which can be an extremely stressful situation if you don't actually manage that loan money properly. It's probably worth it to spend like a week or two just learning about personal finance. So for example, learning what assets are, what liabilities are, learning how to actually make a budget, and then more importantly, I guess, how to stick to a budget, learning about credit cards and how to use them because they're very, very dangerous if misused, learning how your credit score is affected by the things you do, and also even potentially how to track your net worth because it's actually quite fun to see um, your net worth on a graph, even though it's probably in the negatives since loan money. It's a very good indicator of what your financial health is. And if you're new to personal finance and all of this sounds kind of overwhelming, it's it's really not. It probably only takes like a week of just looking into things and really studying. I mean, since you got into med school, you're probably a very smart person. So this shouldn't be that bad. Also, I think it's really important to focus on this now when there's not that much going on probably, as opposed to trying to figure out personal finance and budgeting while in medical school. So then you would have your bank account to worry about and your Anki deck to worry about. Ideally, we wanna be in a place where we only have our Anki deck to worry about and everything else is kind of already resolved and going smoothly. And finally, if you'd like some resources, um, I would probably recommend the book, The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey, which I actually have on the shelf back there. It's the book I've most gifted people because I just think it's an excellent, excellent guide towards personal finance, extremely easy to read. And the other thing I would recommend is if you wanna get into budgeting, uh, the budgeting software that I personally use is YNAB. It's called You Need a Budget and again, Excellent resource. Uh, I actually made a video about that somewhere, but yeah, anyways, moving on to number two. So number two is to check out your new neighborhood. Obviously, it's really important, or at least to me, it's really important to kind of have an idea of where you're, going, where you're going to be living for the next four years of your life. For me personally, I couldn't actually visit. Um, I'm in Australia now, by the way, and so since I couldn't just fly to Australia at the time, what I would do is that I would go on Google Maps. I would go around the like apartment that I was renting at the time. I've actually moved. This is a new apartment. Anyways, I would go around the apartment that I, I was renting at at the time and I would just street view and walk up and down the streets to kind of have a general like idea of what would be around me and what would things actually look like. Yeah, so moving to a new city can be pretty stressful and scary just because you don't know where things are. You don't know what things might look like, but if you spent quite some time on street view. I can tell you from firsthand experience that you'll walk around and you'll be surprised at how familiar things are. And I think that's actually a very unexpected surprise that I got moving here. The other thing that I would suggest is to take a, like a short list of interesting places that you would like to visit while you're living in that area. Med school is for four years. And while med school is your primary dedication during this time, it shouldn't be the entirety of your life. I, I genuinely think that there needs to be some way to kind of unwind and do fun things outside of school. So while you're looking around uh, preemptively where your new home will be, take a nice list of interesting places, interesting cafes, restaurants, weird city attractions, which in my case, it's a beach in the middle of the city, or, you know, just things that you might enjoy on the weekends. And then as like a personal example, my really good friend Rushi and I have a short list of cafes that we want to visit while we're here. And so for every single weekend 
that we've been in medical school so far, we've gone to a different cafe. We're at 23 so far, and we'll continue to probably do that for the rest of our time here in Brisbane, which should be interesting because it allows us to explore the city and then have a fun chat, unwind, and talk about things other than medical school. Next up is to work on a general health routine. And this can mean a lot of different things for different people, uh, depending on what your kind of goal is. But I find that there's kind of four categories that in general, all of us could improve somewhat in. It would be diet, exercise, sleeping habits, and mental health. Um, personally, I dedicated a few months before starting medical school to working on an exercise routine because for the longest time, I actually wanted to go to the gym, but was sort of intimidated because I really didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do things. And so I dedicated like three months of my time to just kind of learn about what to do at the gym exactly and what routine would work best for me. Uh, thankfully, my brother, who is much more fit than I am, helped me out with that. But since I had the routine established, it was a lot easier to continue that once I got here had I not already been working on that uh, like aspect of my life. And looking back on semester one, I can for sure say that being active generally uh, definitely boosts your study stamina. It helps you sleep better and overall just increases your mood throughout the day, which I think is very, very useful in situations when you can sometimes feel pretty overwhelmed by the amount of material that you have to consume on a pretty much daily basis. All right, so number four is to meta study. And studying before starting medical school is actually kind of controversial. I probably would not recommend it. What I would recommend though instead is to study how to study, if that makes sense. And the logic behind this is that right now, there's really not that much pressure to kind of understand the content. So you can really play around with, or at least take a look at different ways that people do things in medical school or in other really hard professions where they have to consume large amounts of material all at once. And so by just looking at these study strategies ahead of time, you likely have a better idea of what will work for you in the long run and have like a preset plan of what you want to do or how you want to start semester one. If you kind of have a hard time figuring out what to do for this one, uh, my personal suggestion for you would be to learn how to use Anki properly. If you don't know, Anki is like essentially a very sophisticated flashcard app. It's not exactly very user friendly, but like the majority of people I know in med school are using it and it currently takes up about two hours of my day every single day. So it's probably best to learn how to use it now as opposed to trying to set everything up in the beginning of the semester, looking at different YouTube videos and not really understanding why some things are set up the way they are in Anki. If you already have Anki downloaded, I would suggest then to preemptively set up the On King uh, Anki deck, which was made for medical school. It's kind of like a compilation of a bunch of different Anki decks, such as Zonki and LOL Not A Cop. It goes very, very well with the Boards and Beyond videos, which you will likely use for your semester as they are excellent. And it is like, it's like completely fully integrated. Yeah, just set that up. It takes maybe like, 30 minutes at max, but it's definitely worth having it already ready to go as opposed to freaking out and trying to figure out how things work in the beginning of the semester when the stress is like up here and you kind of feel overwhelmed with just everything going on. And then besides Anki, the other thing that will probably help you uh, just improve your study skills better is to kind of level up your time management skills. Personally, I use Rome Research for all of my time management. That's where I schedule my lectures when I will do everything pretty much. Obviously there are other softwares out there. The whole point is to get yourself to be as efficient as possible, or at least to have a plan to be as efficient as possible beforehand. So when you start, you can just kind of get going. And then finally, number five is to just relax. Um, this is likely the most free time you're going to have for a very long time. And so it's completely fine for you to take a few weeks off, for you to take a few months off, uh, do nothing but travel, just be with your family, do something that essentially refreshes you because what you don't want to do is to try to preemptively study for medical school and then come in feeling exhausted. You want to begin the year as calm and as well rested as possible. That first week is like really, really hectic. The first few weeks in general are like the hardest I've ever had. Uh, and so if you don't come in refreshed, it's gonna be very hard on you. You just won't enjoy it as much and you're gonna have a not so great time. Now, I personally had a hard time accepting that and so what I did spend my time doing was the other four things in this video. And so if you do have a hard time relaxing, just 
focus on doing one of those. Definitely don't study ahead of time. Everything will be fine in the long run. Anyways, that's it for me. So thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you want, if you could like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Otherwise, have a wonderful and productive day. Goodbye.